Hey there YouTube, this is 101 Bronson back here again. Today we're actually going to be covering my Jack Nicholson DVDs and Blu-rays. I actually recorded this yesterday, but thanks to uh, the audio being way out of sync and me just being too lazy to fix it, I'm just going to re-record it. Uh, yeah, so that's why if you're watching these videos in order, I'm wearing a different shirt than I was yesterday. So Because I did record my Sean Connery DVD collection, which is coming after this. Uh, yesterday after I did the Jack Nicholson originally so and that one is in sync with the audio I checked it so that's coming as it is after this video but in that I'm still wearing my blue polo shirt that I was wearing yesterday but yeah it's just a quick disclaimer so anyway without further ado let's go over Jack Nicholson's movies starting off with a classic A Few Good Men go starring Tom Cruise and Demi Moore Love this movie, of course, it's most known for his courtroom speech at the end. You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have that thing memorized, but uh, it will take too much time if I do the full scene for you, but trust me, it's a great scene. I love the movie. Next up, Anger Management, with Adam Sandler co-starring and uh, some great performances by Marissa Tomei, Louise Guzman, Wood Woody Harrelson, John Turturro is in it. Great movie, great comedy, one of my favorite comedies actually. I love Anger Management. Next up is if, uh, As Good As It Gets, co-starring Helen Hunt and uh, Greg Kinnear. Cuba Gooding Jr., directed by James L. Brooks. Great movie. It's like a romantic comedy slash drama. Um, I like the movie. It's one, it's one of Jack Nicholson's best movies. He won the Oscar for it, deservedly so, I think. Let's move on. Batman. This is all the Batman movies, but we're going to be talking about the first one, of course. Uh, the 1989 Batman by Tim Burton with Michael Keaton as Batman slash Bruce Wayne with Jack Nicholson as the Joker and uh, yeah there's there have been a few Joker performances over the years of course but I think Jack Nicholson is still one of the best I'm not gonna get into the whole who is the best Joker thing I mean every actor that plays a Joker brings her own little thing to the table as they shoot uh, I like um, what's his name the, the he 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 the Joker the most recent Joker movie um, by Todd Phillips. Um, what's his name? I have the movie too. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I think he's great as the Joker. I think Heath Ledger, of course, is great as the Joker. If I would have to say one is the least favorite, I would go for the Suicide Squad Joker played by Jared Leto. I don't like him as a Joker, but he still brings his own thing to the table. He's not copying Jack Nicholson or Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger was never copying Jack Nicholson, and Jack Nicholson, for that matter, was never copying George Romero as a Joker. So, but yeah, Batman, great Jack Nicholson performance. I love him as a Joker. Where does he get all those wonderful toys? <laughs> yeah, great movie. I love it. Batman, the original, 1989. Great movie. Next up is Blood and Wine, which is actually co-starring, among others, Jennifer Lopez and Michael Caine. Yeah, I was expecting more of this movie. I, th I thought, you know, a movie that pairs Jack Nicholson and Michael Caine, I thought that would actually be great, but it actually was a pretty mediocre, lackluster movie about a heist. If I remember correctly, I've only seen it once. I think it's a heist movie. But not a good one at that, so. Next up is Carnal Knowledge, which was directed by Mike Nichols, who did The Graduate. This was actually a few years after The Graduate. Reminded me a little bit of The Graduate, and then it's in that it's dealing with certain subject matters that The Graduate also was dealing with, like in particular sex, right? A lot of uh, characters usually are after sex in this movie and it, you know that's a little comparable to um, 
The Graduate. So, but a great movie though. I think it's one of Jack Nicholson's best performances. Definitely of his early movies, it's one of the best. Same can be said for this one, Chinatown, co-starring Faye Dunaway, directed by Roman Polanski. Chinatown, classic movie, definitely a must-own for Jack Nicholson fans. And I would strongly argue for this one that it's also the case. This is a must-own, The Crossing Guard, written and directed by Sean Penn. Co-starring David Morse and Angelica Houston, among others. I think this is a really underrated movie. I think this is one of the best Jack Nicholson performances. The Departed. Great movie. Directed by Martin Scorsese with a great cast. Among others, Matt Damon, Mark Wahlberg, Leo DiCaprio, of course. Uh, Martin Sheen. Alec Baldwin is actually in it. Great movie. What can I say that hasn't already been said about that movie? I love it. The Departed, one of the best. Next up is Easy Rider. Probably the movie that put him on the map. Um, even though he's in a movie for about 20 minutes, at most. But he steals a scene. He steals the show every scene he's in. So, Great movie. It's a cult classic. What can I say? Next up is Five Easy Pieces. Which is a great Jack Nicholson performance. The movie itself didn't quite uh, click with me the way it does with other people. I'm not taking anything away from it. I think it is a good movie, but a lot of people consider this like a masterpiece among Jack Nicholson movies, and I don't really necessarily agree with that. I like I said, I do think it's great, it's a good movie, but yeah. I'm not connecting with that movie 100% like other people are, so. Next up is Going South, which is actually a western that he directed. And a pretty good movie actually, I thought this was a pretty decent uh, western. More of a comedy also, but... Not a bad movie. Next up is Heartburn, co-starring Meryl Streep, directed by Mike Nichols once again. Music by Carly Simon. I actually was expecting a little more of a movie with these two acting legends in it. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but I was expecting more out of it. I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but, yeah. Next up is Hafa, co-starring Danny DeVito and directed by Danny DeVito, in which Jack Nicholson actually plays Jimmy Hafa, which of course we've recently seen Al Pacino do in The Irishman, and uh, again I'm not gonna say who's better at uh, playing Jimmy Hoffa, Pacino or Nicholson, I think they're both great. They both uh, make it their own. I mean, I wasn't expecting anything less of these two acting giants, you know. Uh, Nicholson is great as Hoffa, I think Danny DeVito does a great job in the movie, and also with directing the movie, by the way. And uh, I recommend it, it's definitely a good Jack Nicholson movie, yeah. yeah. Next up is The Last Detail, actually one of my favorite uh, movies of his, in which he plays a US Navy um, officer I believe, or at least uh, something in the US Navy, I'm, I think it's like an officer type of uh, function, but he actually has to escort along with a buddy of his this, um, for lack of a better word, this prisoner across the country and kind of turns into a road movie but a pretty good one at that, I like it next up is Man Trouble co-starring Alan Barkin actually a romantic comedy type of movie, more of a comedic movie but I thought it was a really good movie Alan Barkin I think is great I mean say what you will about Alan Barkin in the 80s and 90s I thought she was one 
good looking uh, woman so yeah nowadays not that much because of the plastic surgery but back in 80s and 90s I mean just look at Sea of Love she's great in that movie Man Trouble too, by the way but anyway next up is The Missouri Breaks with Marlon Brando co-starring which is again a western and a pretty good one at that um, pretty crazy role by Marlon Brando I thought uh, he played a crazy kind of character but I liked it I liked it I'm actually seeing that the music is done by John Williams and uh, I'll have to watch the movie again because I did not notice that it was John Williams doing the music definitely have to check it out again next up is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest for which Jack Nicholson deservedly won an Academy Award I mean I say that but he was nominated the same year with Al Pacino and Dog Day Afternoon and I do believe that Al Pacino for me should have won but that's not to take anything away from this because this is a hell of a performance by Jack Nicholson I think it's fantastic um, and if there was gonna be anybody that won the Oscar that chair besides Al Pacino this is definitely the one so yeah but still Al Pacino and Dog Day Afternoon was fantastic as well but we're gonna get to Pacino so next up is The Passenger co-starring Maria Schneider directed by this guy Michelangelo and Tony Yoni. I hope I pronounced that right. I actually didn't really care that much for this movie. I thought it was okay, but uh, I'm gonna have to watch it again to get a good opinion on it because that's usually the way I feel. You have to watch a movie multiple times to actually get a good opinion on it. Um, but the passenger, the first viewing of it, I wasn't blown away by it, let's just put it that way. Next up is Pritzi's Honor, co-starring Angelica Houston, directed by her father, John Houston. Actually, a more of a comedy, this is like a gangster comedy slash drama a little bit. And maybe a little bit of romance thrown in there. Yeah, Pritzi's Honor. Only seen it once, and uh, I thought it was okay. Nothing, nothing too special. Thought it was just an okay movie. Next up is The Shining, on Blu-ray. Yeah, I've already talked about this one in my horror movie collection, on DVD, and this is the Blu-ray. Great movie. I have nothing further to add one of my favorites so is this one actually for different reasons but something's gotta give Diane Keaton Keanu Reeves co-starring romantic comedy directed by Nancy Myers I love this movie I'm not a huge fan of romantic comedies but this is definitely one of the best in the genre for me I love this movie I have a big smile on my face every time I watch this film I think Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton have great chemistry. Um, yeah, great movie. Let's move on. Next up is Terms of Endearment. Deborah Winger and Shirley MacLaine movie with Jack Nicholson and a supporting part, actually. A supporting part that he did win an Oscar for, but the movie itself, I'm not a big fan. Um, I thought it was okay, but I don't know, this movie wasn't really my cup of tea, let's put it that way. There were some great good moments in there with Nicholson and Shirley MacLaine, they have great chemistry, but other than that, and it has a pretty good cast too, I mean Jeff Daniels, Danny DeVito, John Lithgow, 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 yeah. I mean... I say check it out for yourself because for me it's not my cup of tea but it might be yours so that's the thing we all have different tastes in movies right next up is the two jakes which is actually a sequel to chinatown look at that grin that's a trademark jack nicholson grin right there 
That's the way we like to see him. <laughs> uh, but no, this is actually a pretty decent sequel to Chinatown. It's nowhere near as good as Chinatown, but uh, not a bad movie nonetheless. Um, great supporting cast, Harvey Keitel, Madeline Stowe, Eli Wallach, among others. Um, yeah, not a bad sequel, but of course the original is still better. But I have seen worse sequels than this, so yeah. Next up is The Witches of Eastwick, uh, which is actually one of one of my favorite um, Jack Nicholson performances. I love seeing him chewing up the scenery in this movie, which he really does. I'm just your average horny little devil. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Cher, Susan Sarandon, and Michelle Pfeiffer, I think they're great as the titular witches. Uh, especially Michelle Pfeiffer, she's one of my favorite actresses actually, so. But yeah, great movie, recommend it. And then we're up to the final one. Wolf. With Michelle Pfeiffer co-starring once again. Directed by Mike Nichols, once again. And I thought this was actually a pretty good movie. It's more like a horror type movie because Jack Nicholson does turn into a werewolf in the movie. Uh, yeah, the special effects actually haven't aged that well, but I've seen worse. You know, I've seen worse. And the music here is actually by Ennio Morricone, so that's a highlight. And I definitely recommend the movie, I think it's pretty good. So there you have it, those are all my Jack Nicholson DVDs and Blu-rays, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Up next is my Sean Connery DVD collection, so stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching, so long for now. <laughs>